Hi, I'm George Cow, and today I'm happy to be here with one of the members of my uh, group coaching program, the Master Heart Community, and I've got Danielle Gardner here with me. Hi, Danny. Hi, George. How are you going? Thanks, thanks for, for yeah. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let me read out your bio uh, for everybody, so we can get a context of what you do. And I'm excited to have you share some of the lessons you've learned. You're learning in as you build your business. Yes. So um, Danielle Gardner is a business coach who specializes in helping holistic practitioners and coaches to create a grounded marketing message that they can feel proud to share online. So that may be helpful for some of you watching this now. Uh, Danielle believes you don't have to be loud and make bold claims to grow a following. You can market yourself in a quiet, authentic, and visionary way that will draw to you your kindred spirits that you would love and enjoy working with. So that is wonderful. And now, of course, I'll put the link to Danielle's um, website and anything, anything relevant in the notes of the video. So be sure to check, check that out and connect with her there. So uh, Danielle, we uh, were talking a bit before this video and one of the lessons you learned, I mean, as a business coach, particularly, you are more sensitive to, to, to these things. And I think the, the, the average business owner, because you coach people on this stuff as well, but um, you know, we are typically taught in, in marketing and sales to, to chase clients, you know, to kind of like, you know, try to reach out to people a lot and, and all that stuff. But you've been learning to shift from chasing clients to building community. Yeah. So talk about that. What does that mean for you? Yeah. So yeah, what did happen is like so many of us, how we start off, I was doing all sorts of various marketing activities and spreading myself very thin really in all different areas. And I, you know, I, it was a lot of hard work and I would get clients that way, but then it dawned on me that if I didn't really have an audience or a community or a following, I didn't really have anything. So it, and that was a time when I started to learn about content marketing. It's like, huh, oh, yeah, you know? So I was like, all right, I'm just going to focus on building community. And I didn't really know exactly what I was going to do, but I guess, first of all, the mindset helped. So just deciding that helped me begin to make different choices. So it just, it felt like something I had control, somewhat control over or something like community building. I thought I can do that. Whereas pushing and striving to get clients all the time. I just, you know, there's a point where it's like, well, I'm, I'm not even sure if all this pushing and striving leads to anything, you know? So it felt like, yeah, I can do that. It was energizing. I can build a community. Um, so really I just, for me, I just started being really helpful and I started, um, kind of unlocking some of the knowledge that I was normally only sharing inside email opt-ins or, um, you know, paid sessions. And I was just being more generous with that and sharing it. And, um, you know, I figured that there was no use me being the world's best kept secret. You know, um, there was no use in only paying clients realizing the value of what I had. Um, and I think, normally what we're taught is like, well, you have testimonials that, you know, that helps, you know, that, that way people can get to know you. And it's like, well, you know, I mean, that's part of it. Um, or, you know, you got to deal with, you, you address objections, you know, that's another way to get clients. But I'm sort of like, you know, I heard this um, saying, the best way you can demonstrate that you can help someone is to actually help them. And that really stuck with me. So um you know, really that has built a, a really quite a good foundation. Like there's still way more to expand into, but I do feel I have a following now, you know, and it means that I've created fertile ground in which offers can then actually be placed into and, and take root and, and something will happen. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. excellent. I love it. Yeah. I've, I felt the same and it is so much easier um, on many levels, when you have a community, uh, they can, and we'll talk about this later, maybe they can tell you uh, what they want. You know? yeah. um, and also, it's, it's easier kind of on the, maybe the heart or 
heart and soul level to be to be giving and trying to help as best as we can through content. And it doesn't mean, and those of you who have seen me talk about this, it doesn't mean we, uh, you know, for those who have online courses to sell, like, oh, should I just give it all away for free? It's like, no, I mean, w you give away the stuff for free that's easy to, to grasp, easier to consume, easier mm -hmm. to understand. The courses, the paid courses are more like the in-depth stuff, the things that have a lot of nuances and things that mm -hmm. take some, maybe even some hand-holding or some, a lot of, more education to understand and, and apply but but yeah once you start to share all the things that you can that's consumable people so appreciate that yeah so yeah. it's so, so great that you're, you're, you do, you found that as well um okay so then you realize as you started sharing these things that people were attracted to how you think and that made a difference in your marketing what do you mean by that how you think yeah and and this is probably more of a an awareness or epiphany or something that's happened more recently um you know especially this year um and actually just in my most recent newsletter i actually wrote that for the first time because it sort of landed in my head like that it's like yeah people are actually coming to me because they're saying i like the way you think mm. basically and i thought how interesting it's not because of why I do what I do or, you know, like anything else. But of course, how I think informs and, and flavors and influences everything I do. And the biggest change that I've made, um, I think especially this year, although I was, I was doing a bit of it last year, um, but just sharing more and more of my opinion or more mm. and more how I think about things, you know, um, and that's what, you know, that's human nature. We want to have interactions with people who think like we think or, you know, share similar values. And, and in essence, I'm sharing my values and my beliefs by sharing my opinion. And I think that's something that is absent in a lot of marketing. I know you do it really well, um, George. And, but, you know, it's something that I'm starting to teach a lot more too. It's like, you know, um, yeah, to sort of draw out these opinions and, and, and people are a little bit surprised about, oh, oh, is that part of marketing type thing? And I think, mm. I reckon it is. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, yeah. That's really, yeah. that's great. Um, maybe we can uh, talk about this thing you, you've been teaching um, called Write, Observe, Invite. I think this might be a good time. Yeah, sure. So tell us what, what that approach is and, and what that means. Yeah, so it's, I guess, a really simple launch strategy. And I mean, super simple. Like I've actually never really been into, when I first heard of this word launch, I couldn't, like people were launching a website or, or anything. I was like, don't you just put it up and off you go? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I couldn't, I didn't know what, why all this fuss needed to happen. And, and I get it more now. But um, what I also get is that launching it can be very, very um, stressful. You know? So um, really this, the right is right content. Or, you know, if someone, if videos their thing, you know, whatever, it's like the creation bit, you know, the, um, then observe is, what happens when that goes out? Like how, how, do, how is it received and who seems to be appreciating it? And, you know, just observing what happens basically. And then invite is the, well, you know, when you have an offer, then um, who can you invite to actually come into this, you know? And there's sort of an extra bit that I um, will say to people now, like they, you know, I'm sure you come across this, George. Everyone wants to sort of come out of the gates with a group, a group program, you know, and no community, <laughs> no nothing. And so um, one very telling little test you can do is it's like, can you write down eight to ten people's names who you believe that this offer would be really good for? Now, I do it myself, right? So if I've got something coming up like a mastermind or whatever, I'm like, okay, who would be good for this? Now, if, I, if the mastermind's for eight people and I can't even come up with eight people, then it kind of tells me that I don't have enough fertile ground yet for this offer, you know? Um, it's, it's a little bit premature. And, and, you know, I mean, mo in most cases for me, I've been able to 
write a list. But I have a, you know, when I share it with this with a lot of people, it's like, huh, <laughs> well, like that's an idea, you know. Um, so it kind of is very telling, isn't it? That, you know, how have you got enough content out there that is being very helpful that people are engaging with? Um, so, yeah, a very simple process to go through. I like that. Yeah. Write, observe, invite. I like that you said, hey, in the invite stage, can you write down the names of eight people that, um, you know, I would call them fans, right? Or, yeah, yeah. Or engagers yeah. of your content that it would make sense for them to say yes or they would be, it would feel good for you to reach out to. Yeah. Uh, so that's nice. I really like that. Um, and like yeah. with the with this mastermind, I was just saying that I have just started. Like I wrote down about eight to ten names. Mm -hmm. I think one of them on the list has is has joined. The others came from other places, mm -hmm. right? But it's still very telling. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it doesn't mean to say that all of those people, you know, are, are going to say yes. But it's just an indicator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, great. Great. And we'll, we'll talk a bit about the mastermind later if you, if you would like to, um, in addition to your marketing appraisal. But um, would you like to say anything about market research? Because that's something that um, you've been doing better and more, I think, than, than most people, including most business coaches. And uh, you learn some things about market research. For, so first of all, what is market research? How would you describe it? Why is it important? Mm -hmm. And how do you kind of start going about it? Yeah. Okay. Um, gosh, how would I define market research? It's, it, must, it should be obvious, but I guess it's really just observing. That, that's like a really big part of it, like observing what is actually happening um, around you. So, and there are various ways to do that. You see, a lot of people in the communities I work with, you know, it's all about intuition and, you know, all of this kind of stuff. And people are always, I feel like they're staring down at their navels, creating stuff from their intuition that maybe the market hasn't called for or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So it's sort of like lift your eyes up. You yeah. I, I like to say they're, they're, they're ahead of their time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, and start talking to people. So, you know, um, where I began my own journey with market research is the sort of, I would say, traditional market research interviews. So where there's a set of questions that you're asking every person and, um, you know, then you, you know, I would say, you know, you initially interview at least 10. Um, there was one time that I did it. I was getting so much out of it. I kept going. I went to 20. So, um, and that happened over like maybe a month and a half. But, you know, I got a lot of data from that, you know. So um, that's one way to do it. If, if you do it by interviews, really, really important to actually um, document as you go, <laughs> I reckon. Because when I first started it, I was just like, um, well, I'll, I'll just really listen to the recording. But, you know, if you do 10 hours of recordings, like it's not really, um, it's something that you can keep putting off. I'll listen to that recording later. So I got, I got into the habit of making really good notes as I go and actually typing into a spreadsheet if I'm doing um, the, the interviews that way. Um, how I tend to do it now more is a bit different. A, a lot of it is actually automated. So what I mean by that is um, kind of every time you sign up for something with me, I'm asking you questions, right? So for my newsletter, for example, um, there's a couple of market research questions there. So I'm, I'm, I'm constantly getting data and I'm really, I'm not having to do anything extra for it. So I can just go into my um, like Google spreadsheet and go, you know, just check out the latest data of, of what's happening, you know. Um, and then the other way I do it now is, um, you know, in, uh, you know, for example, this, um, the 30 minute marketing message appraisal, the first couple of questions, they're very helpful for the person who I'm with, but they're basically helpful for me because they're market research questions, you know? So it's like, I'm just a market research freak and I just keep finding opportunities to embed the process into my business. Um, yeah. So some of the things that I've learned from doing that is that I might use a particular say things in a particular way and then I notice people are saying it a different way and that's more meaningful to them 
So for me, market research isn't about me changing who I am, you know, but it's about observing certain nuances and, and, and you can just change that and see what happens. So, you know, I was looking at some data the other day and noticing how uh, I was just going down the list and I was seeing how many times people were talking about consistency with content, especially, or marketing. So it was like all about consistency. And I was thinking, yeah, I'd probably, if I was going to talk about that, I'd be talking about like accountability. I would probably use that word. And so they're kind of different. They're, they're connected, but different. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So like people might need accountability to be consistent, right? But I could actually ditch talking about accountability and just talking about um, what they actually want, which is because not everyone wants accountability, but they do want consistency. Because <laughs> um, people have got very, really interesting views about what accountability is, you yeah. know, as well. Like, so, you know, I kind of think it's about me going, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to tell someone because that's going to help me. It's not about someone telling me what to do, you know. So, yeah, making, noticing little changes like that can make a really big difference to how the message is received to someone and how they feel. And I think that's really marketing is all about how does someone feel when they re read what you're saying, you know, or digest what you're saying. So, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. It's great. Great. Hmm. So I'll be sure to put the link or links in the notes of the video. Um, and any kind of parting words of encouragement, inspiration, anything you want to say to the audience as we end the uh, call? Mm, thanks for putting me on the spot, George. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I think um, I would just say that if anyone's feeling like they're just running around trying to get clients and whatever, it's like really, it, it goes back to that. How can you build your following? How can you build your audience? How can you maybe just focus on um, the content and, and being very helpful and maybe sharing your opinion and, and doing that so that you can create fertile ground so that you can then put an offer out that people will be interested in and, and you know, they're, they're ready for because they know you a bit. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thanks for being an example of that. And uh, I'll, I'll just want to encourage everyone to go and check out Danny's page. And um, if you're interested in the marketing message appraisal, that, that is very valuable, very helpful. Um, so check that out as well. The links are in the, in the notes and thanks for doing this, Danny. Yeah. Thank you. It's been fun. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs>